Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing two muscles, and those are the muscles of the dorsal foot compartment. Now, when you cover the muscles of the feet, there's a lot more than just two, but the vast majority of them are what we call plantar muscles. They're really on the plantar surface, arranged in four layers from superficial to deep. There's only two muscles on the dorsum of the foot. Okay, that's it, and it's just these two. Extensor digitorum brevis and extensor hallucis brevis. Now, just as a, a, a review, Remember in the previous video when we discussed the anterior compartment of the leg, so these are muscles not in the foot, these are on the leg, we had extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus. Now extensor digitorum longus, this muscle, uh, is going to extend really the lateral four toes, so digits two, three, four, and five. If we look at this muscle, notice that eventually it divides into four separate tendons, and each one of those tendons goes to one of digits two through five. And then extensor hallucis longus also is going to extend but just the hallux, or the great toe, or digit one. And you can see there it just has one tendon that goes to the great toe. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out about these two muscles which are in the leg is that extensor digitorum longus, notice the insertion, is going to be the middle and distal phalanges of the lateral four toes. So because extensor digitorum longus is able to insert all the way out on the distal phalanx of each of those toes, it's actually going to be able to extend at the distal interphalangeal joint. It's also going to be able to extend at the proximal interphalangeal joint by nature that it inserts also on the middle phalanx of each of those toes. Now for extensor hallucis longus, this one's going to insert on the distal phalanx of the hallux. Remember the great toe, just like the thumb, only has two phalanges, okay, just a proximal and a distal. So this one inserts all the way out the distal phalanx. So this extensor hallucis longus is going to be able to uh, produce extension at the interphalangeal joint of the hallux. Okay? Now when we look at these muscles, we're going to see something a little bit different. Okay? Um, extensor digitorum brevis and extensor hallucis brevis are just that. They are brief. They have brevity. They're shorter muscles. They do not originate on the leg like these other two did. Okay. So the brevis counterparts are intrinsic muscles of the foot. To be an intrinsic muscle of the foot, that just means that the muscular belly has to be completely within the foot. Okay, And it is for these two. These are extrinsic muscles of the foot. They control movements within the feet, but the muscular bellies exist up here in the leg. All right? So these are two intrinsic muscles of the foot. And if we look at their origins, uh, both of them originate on the calcaneus. Now, to be very specific, extensor hallucis brevis originates really more on the medial aspect of the calcaneus, and then extensor digitorum brevis is more on the lateral aspect. Okay, You can actually see the muscular bellies lie in that orientation with respect to one another, but generally speaking, they both originate on the calcaneus. Now, the insertions are a little bit different here. For extensor hallucis brevis, this one inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the hallux. You notice the difference there. Extensor hallucis longus inserted at the distal phalanx, whereas for brevis, it inserts at the proximal phalanx. So is extensor hallucis brevis going to be able to extend at the interphalangeal joint? And the answer is no. It doesn't extend out that far. Okay, so this muscle, because it only inserts out at the proximal phalanx of the hallux, it's going to extend the big toe, but it's only going to extend at uh, the metatarsophalangeal joint, the MTP, metatarsophalangeal joint, not at the interphalangeal joint, which is what its longest counterpart did. Now for extensor digitorum brevis, this one inserts at the long extensor tendons of digits two through four. Okay, so when we say long extensor tendons, what we actually mean is that we're talking about the tendons of extensor digitorum longus. Okay, so take a look at these tendons right here. So here's the tendons. Here's the tendon that goes to digit two of extensor digitorum longus. Here's the tendon of three. Here's the tendon of four, right? And then here's the one that goes to digit five. Now when we say 
that extensor digitorum brevis inserts on the long extensor tendons, we mean it's literally inserting on those tendons of extensor digitorum longus. So what we should see here is that, for example, for the tendon of longus going to digit two, uh, extensor digitorum brevis would also have a tendon that literally inserts on this tendon. For this tendon going to digit three, extensor digitorum brevis would also have a tendon that inserts on this tendon. For the tendon going to digit four here of longus, extensor digitorum brevis would also have a tendon that literally inserts on this tendon. Now if I asked you, does the tendon going to digit five have an extensor digitorum brevis tendon inserting on this tendon? The answer is no. So if we look here, we see that these tendons of extensor digitorum brevis only insert on the long extensor tendons of digits two through four. So my question to you is, can extensor digitorum brevis assist with extension of digit five, the digit equinti? And the answer is no. It can only assist with the extension of digits two, three, and four. Okay. It also cannot assist with the extension of digit one because that's the job of extensor hallucis brevis and extensor hallucis longus. So just keep that in mind. The way extensor digitorum brevis works is it adds tension on these tendons of extensor digitorum longus, but only those of digits two through four. And so by doing this, it's gonna be able to aid in the extension of digits two through four. But for digit five, that's literally just extensor digitorum longus. Now, what about the innervation to these muscles? Well, the innervation is provided by the deep perineal or deep fibular nerve. Remember that the common perineal nerve wraps around the head of the fibula and eventually divides into a superficial perineal nerve which supplies the lateral compartment of the leg and then a deep perineal nerve which supplies the anterior compartment of the leg. And so that deep perineal nerve continues down here, crosses really underneath this extensor retinaculum, and then it goes into the foot and supplies these two muscles right here. Okay, so the dorsum of the foot is supplied by the deep perineal nerve. Now in terms of blood supply, they're supplied with blood via the dorsalis pedis artery. Now the dorsalis pedis artery is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery. So again, that anterior tibial artery, when it's coming down from the leg, it's gonna cross under this extensor retinaculum. And when it more or less crosses the ankle joint, it changes names to the dorsalis pedis artery, and that artery supplies these two muscles, all right? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the dorsum of the foot and its musculature. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.